10 p.m. here on TV3. Welcome to The Late News. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Tonight, government finally auctions the 69 Hyundai Gallopers left to rot at the Institute of Local Government Studies after nearly two decades. We'll tell you more about this and other stories. Do stay with us. We're live on your DSTV channel 279 and on our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. Send us your views and comments on our various social media platforms. First, let's do the highlights. In the highlights tonight, pupils of Cheldo MA Basic School have been put on first aid medication to treat recurrent sores and rashes on their body. Their teacher, who was the school health education program coordinator, is giving them the treatment as they wait for official reports from the Ghana Health Service to determine cause of the skin infection. Also, residents of Alogbashi in the Greater Accra region have resorted to dumping of waste on the Accra in Sawum railway line. A large portion of the railway line has been covered with filth. On the international front tonight, Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt has expressed his extreme disappointment in a phone call with his Iranian counterpart following the seizure of a British flagged tanker in the Gulf. It comes after Mr. Hunt warned Iran may be choosing a dangerous path of illegal and destabilizing behavior. Let's now do the big one. In the big one tonight, government has finally auctioned the 69 Hyundai Gallopers which were left to rot at the Institute of Local Government Studies nearly two decades. The vehicles were ordered in 2000 by the then president, Jerry John Rollins, at the cost of $30,000 each. But after 18 years, the vehicles could only be sold at 19,150 cities, only following evaluation by the state transport company. The vehicles left at the mercy of the weather had become rusty and lost value. The finance ministry ordered the valuation and sale in order to recoup some of the cost of the vehicles. There was a public sale which took place in May this year and persons who picked the cars were asked to assess them and if they find them acceptable, they were to make payment to the Ghana Revenue Authority after which they are allowed to pick their car. About one ten of the Hyundai Galloper vehicles were imported to be used by metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives across the country. The government took delivery of 27 of them that year. The remaining 87 came in batches over a period of three years. But the John Kofua government, which came into power in 2001, refused to distribute the vehicles because there was no agreement backing the purchase. Let's stay a while longer on this and speak with co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption, Adam Sinanu, who is joining me on the phone. Thank you for joining us, Adam. The vehicles have been allocated to the interested parties, but they are to go and ex examine it. And if they find it acceptable, they make payments, meaning that's a likelihood they will not get the 19,150 cities put on it. How should the claim by the Kufour government that there was no agreement covering the purchase of the vehicles be tackled? Sorry, if you can come with your question again. So the Kufour government is claiming that there was no agreement backing the payment, and that's why the vehicles were left and, and sold or undistributed. How should you think we should be going about tackling this issue? Is this worrisome? Well... It's absolutely worse. Huh? It's just that it's taking us so long to get to the point where 
we realized we must retrieve the resources invested in these cars. Indeed, I think that the most crucial thing is what lessons have we learned out of this experience? And how do we intend to institutionalize mechanisms to prevent a reoccurrence of this kind of situation where one government imposes things, the next government says that the documentation is not complete, and we are left to sit and to rocks for so many years. Um, and so perhaps what media and other concerned parties also to be asking for is what type of report has the, what has the Auditor General and other parties said ought to be in place to prevent the occurrence of this? Uh, because at the moment, whatever value is nowhere near the original value of the assets that were procured. So clearly, this is a case that will pass for causing financial loss to the states. Would you recommend prosecution? Or what would you recommend is done? Well, um, I think that the, the, it is in that sense that I'm saying that we do need some kind of investigation, some type of forensic investigation to find out who procured these vehicles, what was the process that was followed. Can we find somebody, an individual, an entity culpable for following due process? Were they specific they should have done that were not done, and therefore the subsequent government could not act? Until we are clear in our mind uh, of what exactly transpired, it is difficult to say that somebody had a financial loss, even though on the surface of it, it would appear that something has gone wrong. But we do need a factual you know, investigation, interrogation of what has transpired to know what went wrong precisely. How come one government said there was no documentation? Is that possible? And if fully somebody goes through the right procurement process or contractual arrangements, then we can find someone culpable to say, yes, we are caused financial costs in this case. Mm. So, Adam, you see, these vehicles came in in 2000 and we are now distributing them in 2019, which gives us 19 of them being there. When you hear issues like this, how do they deter us from going ahead with the fight against corruption? Do you, do you think we should even continue the fight? Well, it is very, how I put it, disconcerting and, and worrying. Uh, it is frustrating that we have such situations that continue. I think that it requires all of us to be more vocal. You know, the level of demanding accountability mm -hmm. and the tempo of that needs to increase in this country. We need many more people mm -hmm. saying that look, if the right thing is not done, we are going to hold you accountable. And when that happens, it will make those who are so inclined to be very lackadaisical, complacent, laid back with dealing with this issue and having a robust response to recognize that the citizens are not going to sit down and, and allow these kind of things to continue. I think that if it's taken 19 years, it's going to be caught the level of insistence that the right thing should be done. has not been loud enough. It has not been strong enough. And we have not held our leaders accountable to do the right thing. And we need to ourselves decide that we don't allow people to snap or so many years. Because we are all, at the end of the day, the ones who suffer the loss in terms of resources wasted and the things, opportunity costs. Uh, mm. All right, thank you very much for speaking with us. Adam Senanu is co chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. You're watching News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV channel 279. So, 69 Hindai gallopers valued at $30,000 each is $2,070,000. After nearly two decades, 69 gallopers auctioned at 19,150 cities each. When you do the maths, government is recovering about $276,000 out of the $2,070,000. Let's listen to Deputy Finance Minister Kweku Kwating disclosing this to the media last year. Uh, there were issues in court uh, relating to those vehicles that I'm sure in the past uh, made it um, difficult for uh, not just customs, but government generally uh, to proceed to dispose of those vehicles. But uh, a lot of those matters have been resolved now. And given 
the rate at which those vehicles are deteriorating, uh, we have made a decision to dispose of them. We're looking to do that before the year closes. So, James Kwabna Bomfe is acting general secretary of the Convention People's Party, and he joins me on the phone. Thank you, sir, for joining us on News at 10. Thank you for having me, Grace. Yeah, so many have said this has come a little too late. Do you share the same view? Well, first and foremost, I think that um, it's important to establish that there seems to be some um, litigation about these vehicles um, regarding um, some claims. Mm. But as we know, the vehicles technically remain confiscated items um, under the authority of the Customs Excise and Preventive uh, Services um, of the country. And it's been a long battle what to do with these vehicles, to keep them there, or whatever to do with them. But at the end of the day, I think that it is a good step that a decision has been taken. Mm. What we can do now as a country is to interrogate the decision as to whether or not the about 20,000 Ghana cities auction fee is okay if you consider the, the, the uh, loss of value on the vehicle over the period. I'm sure from about 2000, is that the right year? Yes. Yes, yes. from about 2000 mm. to 2019. That's about yes, 2000 years. to 2019. Yes, so 19 years. What was the value of the vehicles then? Is the 20,000 value auction, um, val I mean, good value for money in terms of auction? If you, if you, if you, you understand the auction arrangements, if a vehicle leaves a um, showroom today on the street, it loses about seven or so percent of its original, I mean, actual value just because it has left the showroom. That's, that's something in the business world. But we can, we can ask the experts in that field, those who work on vehicles, in the international circles, and so on and so forth. And then we will get to appreciate um, the actual figures that have yeah. been put on these things. And we can understand. But I think that we should pat the authorities who have taken this bold step on the back and also ask that a proper audit is done to appreciate uh, the, the value for money. I understand STC did um, the, the arrangement, and this is the state's, I mean, transport company. Mm -hmm. If we can trust any engineers or mm -hmm. um, auctioneers to place better values on vehicles, yeah. I don't think we can go beyond STC. Okay. unless we have contrary figures. But until then, I want to say that we should pat the authorities on the back for bringing closure to this matter. Okay, so it's, it's, it's been some 19 years since the vehicles came into the country. And over the years, we've had governments come in and go. And this has also been in their notice. How would you describe the manner in which these successive governments have handled the issue? Well. As I have always maintained, this has been, if you say successive governments, they have not been different governments. There have been two governments of NDC and PP of sameness, of sameness. And they have all had the opportunity to deal with this matter. Fortunately or unfortunately, it is just one of them again, the NPP in government that is bringing this matter to closure. For me, I think that we should learn lessons from it. The back and forth has not helped anybody. Okay. At the end of the day, it is the country's resources that are at stake. One, 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 once a decision has been taken on it, let us move forward and learn lessons. That why did it take this long for us to come to this closure? Mm. Could we not have done it earlier? Mm. That is for post-mortem. But okay. immediately, we should be grateful that closure has been brought to this matter. And those who have been bold and courageous, you see, the point sometimes is that this country, a lot of our problems linger because the courage to execute decisions um, is not there. All right. So, after mm. being told your decision was wrong when it's been taken, it, it is bound to happen. But to be bold and courageous to take the step is a critical thing. Okay. And I'm saying that it's a good thing it's been done now. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us. James Kovna Bonfe is General Secretary of the Convention People's Party. News at 10 is back with more. After this break, don't go away.
Welcome back. Now, civil society groups and some lawyers have been on the neck of the Ghana Police Service this week over the refusal to release Gregory Afoko on bail despite a court's order. In our story of the week, Kwachi Afrenyama explores the various angles to this development. The Gregory Afoko case has been in court since 2015. The death of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the MPP, Adams Mahama, became one of the most topical conversations then. Many expected the trial to be swift, but it has now taken over three years. The restart of the trial after a later arrest of the second suspect, Asagwe Alangadi, is all part of the reason the case has traveled that period. On March 14 this year, an Accra High Court presided over by Justice George Bwedi admitted Gregory Afoko to bail in the sum of 500,000 cities with two sureties, one of whom must be justified. That was after his lawyers had argued that their client deserved to be granted bail because the state was not ready to prosecute him. All the bail conditions were met. But Gregory was in fact never granted bail. News of the suspect's hospitalization after allegedly vomiting blood and some pictures of him in handcuffs at a health facility would go viral on social media. Days later, the matter would go to court again. At a court hearing on Monday by a different high court, the bail application granted Gregory Afoko was revoked. This was after the court upheld arguments by prosecutors indicating that the circumstances under which Gregory Afoko was granted bail earlier had changed. According to the prosecutor, the other high court granted Afoko bail on the basis that the state was not certain as to when to start prosecution. She further argued that there was the likelihood that Afoko would not appear before the court to stand trial if the bail was not rescinded. This development triggered a fresh round of debates with many questioning why the police never allowed Gregory to go home despite meeting all his bail conditions. Amnesty International has petitioned Shrai to investigate the circumstances that led to the continuous detention of Gregory Afoko despite being granted bail. Pressure group Occupy Ghana is also demanding a full-scale investigation into the matter. The Occupy Ghana statement further demanded that these officials be punished in accordance with the country's laws. On Wednesday, a seven-member jury was empaneled to hear the case. This was after Gregory Afoko and Asagbe Alangdi pleaded not guilty to the charges of conspiracy to commit murder and murder. The state intends to call 19 witnesses in the course of the trial. The case has been adjourned to July 26. For TV3 News, Kwache. Afreniama. Here in the studio, my name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Now, pupils of Cheldom MA Basic School have been put on first aid medication to treat recurrent sores and rashes on their body. Their teacher, who is the school health education program coordinator, is giving them the treatment as they await for official reports from the Ghana Health Service to determine cause of the skin infection. Shedom is a farming community located in the lower Menyakrobo municipality of the eastern region. Residents live in scattered hamlets. The Shedom Municipal Assembly Basic School has an enrollment of 230 from kindergarten to junior high school. Pupils walk long distances, some on barefoot and others on shoes donated by benefactors. Their source of water is untreated well in a borehole. School authorities see the water before it is used by peoples. But some peoples fear the continuous use of the water from the untreated well may have adverse effects on them. Our colleagues, when they drink it, they get skin diseases. And we also, because we don't have anything to do about it, when we are also drinking it, we are thinking that we also get the disease. Um, we don't have clean water to drink and if we drink the water too, we get some effective from the water. Some is diarrhea. Some people are said to have complained of stomach problems before the source were discovered by their teacher, Frederick Nati, who also has a school health education program. We realize that these days when the children come to school, they have a lot of sores on them. And the first aid provision was only based on maybe their stomach upset, the headache. Hmm. So when I started seeing the source on them, I said, oh, I can do something. So 
I'll be asking some health personnel how we can assist children with SARS. Under the school health education program, teachers are trained to care for the basic health care needs of people during their stay in school. He explained efforts to treat the reoccurring skin infections and sores is proving difficult, causing him to report to his municipal directors for assistance two weeks ago. Pupils numbering 15 are currently undergoing first aid treatments plan as they wait for official reports on cause of infection. First, you have to dress the sore well before you apply the medicine. So we use hydrogen peroxide, which cleans the wound. And then later, we use the dress on it. And also, if the sore comes as a result of rashes, then we use the penicillin ointment on it. Now, uses the water out of the sore faster. Yilo Krobo, Municipal Assembly Deputy Director of Education, Agnes Atipo, was hopeful by Monday, Official reports on blood samples taken by the health service personnel would reveal the real cause of the infection. We well, apologize for those pictures in our earlier story, but let's talk about sanitation because residents of Alagbashi in the Greater Accra region have resorted to dumping of waste on the Accra and Sawum railway line. A large portion of the railway line has been covered with filth. Joseph Armstrong Gold Alagbe visited the area and has come through with his reports. The railway looks attractive and well arranged from a distance, but getting closer, it tells a painful story of how residents, mainly squatters living close to the rail lines, have resorted to dumping of refuse on the newly worked on Akrain Sawam rail line. The residents see nothing wrong with the dumping of refuse here. It's not for free. We pay one CD each for Bala, for uh, rubbish. So an uh, uh, old man used to sit over here, then he used to collect the money from us. I don't get that, so I'm supposed to dump this over here. If I get that from my house, I won't dump my ball over here. Ghanaians. If me, I get that from my house, I won't dump ball over here. I'm a guy, I'm paying tax, so they supposed to supply so, so that in my house, in my community, in my district. We are the baller now. We are the baller now. We are the baller now. We are the baller We don't have any place to dump our refuse. From Alogoshi all the way to Achimota has become our dumping site. As part of TV3 sanitation campaign, I made a formal complaint to the municipal chief executive of Okainkwe North, Boilai. He later followed me together with his district directors to Alubushi. We were later joined by the assemblyman of the area. The municipal chief executive, upon seeing the mess created along the railway lines, became upset and furious. No, then we need to come and do some. Yeah, uh -huh. we need yeah, yeah, we need to apply back when I was uh, appointed, uh, I visited a lot of places. Um, I remember we came here, but the situation wasn't as bad as um, I'm seeing this morning. And uh, I'm very overwhelmed about what I'm seeing here because it's very sad and very pathetic. He promised to have the refuse collected within two weeks. Ministry of Railways, um, this is their track or whatever. And they know that this thing was going on because they apply the road all the time. So they could have, you know, been proactive to alert the, you know, our mother assembly, that's AMA. We'll give ourselves some two weeks to be able to do that. So we are starting this Saturday. But what will happen to squatters who dumped refuse along the rail line? We will arrest anyone found dumping refuse here. The resident had earlier accused the assemblyman for the area of collecting money to allow them dump refuse here. But the assemblyman refuted the allegations. To take money to dump here as an assemblyman. Mm. Honestly, a local government need to make me resign as an assembly. Why should I even do this in the first place? No, I swear an oath to carry the job. When you do this, it will be a curse on you. Assemblyman, I will never do this. Joseph Armstrong Gold, TV3, Alobushi, Accra.
So let us also know how the situation is like in your community when it comes to sanitation by sending us videos and pictures with the hashtag garbage out and they will be aired here on this platform as we continue with our sanitation campaign. That's it for tonight's edition of News at 10 on TV3 which was also live on DSTV channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Many thanks for joining us.